What's going on guys? Welcome back to the garage. Um, finally got some nice weather outside, so going to be tackling a project that I've been waiting to do for quite a while and um, that is finally spraying the inside of the subframe. Um, I kind of touched on that in one of my later or last videos. Just saying I was waiting for it to be somewhat nice outside. Um, today it's sunny. Uh, three degrees Celsius in March um, so I don't really want to wait anymore so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it even though it's a little bit cold but um, the Sun kind of makes up for that so it shouldn't be too bad um, I just need to do a little bit of prep work to the subframe blow out some of the dust and uh, thin this out just oh, sorry about that uh, getting a phone call but um, yeah, anyways, what was I saying? Yeah, I just have to do a little bit of prep work to the subframe, blow out some dust that's uh, accumulated in there and left over from being blasted, and then uh, thin out my remaining pour 15 using the KBS number one thinner and uh, spray it using uh, this guy here and using that 360 nozzle that I was talking about before. So yeah, this is what I'm gonna use to blast out the dirt and dust. Uh, if you don't have one of these, these things are super awesome uh, for drying out your car and um, yeah, blowing out any remaining water that could be in your side mirrors or in your wheels and just keeping the water spots away. And one thing I wanna touch on here is my attempt to paint this diff cover was a failure. Um, just because I think the paint was too hard. So when I actually went to tighten down these bolts, all the paint cracked and it didn't uh, adhere all that well. So I decided to go get this powder coated. Um, yeah, it's a way better finish, a lot more durable. And I replaced all the bolts with uh, stainless uh, socket caps. So funny thing about these stainless steel socket cap bolts, um, these are an M10 by 1.25 and uh, being in Canada, which is a metric country, trying to find these was absolutely impossible. The only place I could find these was bellmetric.com and they are currently enough out of the States. Um, yeah, a fine thread metric stainless socket cap pretty much doesn't exist in Canada, which is kind of funny. Um, and I still had to buy these 60 mil length and chop 30 mil off of them because these are a 30 mil uh, length. So yeah, kind of funny, kind of suck having to pay US price and ship them. It was like about a hundred dollars Canadian for 10 of these but I think it looks really really good um, definitely worth it in my opinion but yeah let's get on to prepping the subframe and uh, I guess I'm gonna clean this stuff up and take this table outside and do it out there So I got the subframe outside and you can see the uh, POR 15 job turned out really well on this. It's almost, you'd be hard to tell that it's not powder coat, um, but uh, let's see if you can see in here. So there is some dust and stuff in there and that's what we'll be tackling today with the uh, 360 nozzle and the uh, CO2 sprayer. But uh, like I said before, I'm gonna power this thing up, blow out all the dust, uh, maybe tape off some of these holes just to keep it from, or keep the bar 15 from dripping out when I paint it. But uh, yeah, we'll get to that.
All right, well, this thing's all taped up and sealed as good as I think it's gonna get. Um, I think if any of the Pour 15 sprays out, I should be able to just wipe it up with a paper towel or something before it dries. But um, yeah, now we will go ahead and load up the sprayer. So reading the instructions here, it says usually you don't have to thin this out so I might actually just pour a little bit in here and uh, spray it using the sprayer and the nozzle and maybe test it in this pop bottle and see how well it does and then if not uh, or if it doesn't spray all that well I'll thin it out with this. Um, you only need to thin out if you are going to thin um, 5 to 10 percent so I'm probably going to fill this up to, I don't know, 60 mil and then put in three mils of thinner and see what that does, um, if I have to, but uh, yeah, so this is an experiment, I've never done this before, so we'll see how it turns out. Thankfully it's on the inside of the uh, subframe, so if it doesn't look super pretty, it doesn't really matter, and I mean I'm not going to drive this car in the winter, so. If parts aren't absolutely 100% coated, I don't think it will be a big issue because, yeah, this car is going to mainly stay in the garage during the shittier months. Alright, so um, to operate this sprayer, uh, looks pretty simple. This bit just sprays off, or sprays off, sorry, twists off and um, is pressurized. So. You can reuse this as many times as you want. Um, you have to buy new ones of these, uh, which is kind of cool. So, we'll just go ahead and fill this up. And I've said this a million times before, these mason jars work really well for uh, storing pour 15. This has been in here for weeks and it's still, still liquid, so. I'm going to pour some out into here. Uh, let me get me some paper towel. All right. um, probably should be wearing gloves, but my hands get beat up so much, doesn't really matter. The poor 15 gets worn off within a couple days, so. Um, yeah, let's see how much we actually poured into here. And remember, this stuff really goes a long way, so I probably don't even need 60 mils. But uh, I might end up using a bit more just because it's in a sprayer and I can't really control the flow that well. Mm -hmm. huh. Look at that. Pretty much bang on 60 mil. Yeah, that was a good guess. Let's see here. So, I believe this pops off. This cap is removable, and then we'll take this guy here, and okay, guys. So uh, it is a few weeks later, and uh, ran into some issues there that you could see this cap here that came with the 360 nozzle didn't actually fit because you can see that there this one is kind of like the male style and this one is the female style which uh, fits on this can and could not find any sort of adapter could not find anything like this uh, from my auto body shop and had to go away for work and came back and then all this corona stuff was going on so 
Um, it was pretty impossible to find anything, but I happened to stumble upon these uh, 3M nozzles here, which are actually for their uh, cavity wax. So this is one of the nozzles here. And, oops. So, you can see that. It is the same style as the one that came off the can. So, I'm hoping that this will work. Um, package I bought ended up not having the tip in here, but it's got these other two in here, and as you can see, these are really freaking long. So, yeah, these are for actually putting cavity wax inside of frame rails and stuff like that. So, that's why they're super, super long, but I can just pop off one of these uh, tips here, or even just, I wonder if I should use this one here, and just stick it in the end of this plastic hose, and then we should be good to go. Yeah, this Pour 15's been sitting in this little jar for, what, it's probably been three weeks since I originally tried to do this. It's March, tw or sorry, not March, it's April 12th. Yeah, even more than that, so I think when I, first started to do this it was March 3rd um, but yeah so this has been in here it's still liquid it looks a little bit thicker so I might actually just go ahead and thin it <laughs> now we'll put this in here And hopefully this works. So grab this pop bottle here and we'll do a little test. I'm not sure if since this thing has been sitting for so long, this actual charged canister, I'm hoping it still has pressure in it. Oh, but Okay, so pretty much given up on the Pour 15 and this thing. I'm not really sure if it's just this thing doesn't have enough uh, pressure in it, if it's too old or, or what. And uh, I'm tired of waiting around to do this and the place I want to go to is not open. So I have resorted to using this. The original cap that I bought uh, does fit on this can because it was just one of these. And it seems to work okay. The spray pattern isn't great, as you can kind of see, but this is on a plastic bottle, so hopefully it'll be a little bit better on actual metal. But anyways, I'd rather just get some sort of coating in there rather than no coating. Um, so I think this will have to do. <laughs> Well, this is kind of going how I thought it would with this. Maybe it would have been the same using the Pour 15, but a lot of it comes out. Uh, it's super hard to control the spray. Um, so the frame rail just ends up getting soaked and then you got to pour out all the excess paint. Uh, it is pretty messy. Got a lot of splash all over me, but yeah, I think this is the best it's gonna get. So I'll just continue on and keep doing this and uh, hopefully I don't get covered in too much paint. So I just switched it up. I swapped out the straight tube 
from the uh, 3M kit and just used the brass adapter from this red nozzle, hooked it up here, uh, just because that curvy one was kind of a hassle to get in there. Um, it does have a little bit of a different uh, I'll focus on here tip here, um, which seems to have a little bit of a better spray pattern. So, um, yeah, hopefully this works out a little bit better. Uh, it seems like you can control the flow a little bit more with this uh, 3M nozzle. So, let's give this a go. Alright, well, uh, it's all coated on the inside, still a little bit of touch-ups to do. Uh, definitely didn't turn out how I was hoping it to. Um, yeah, I guess in hindsight, if I was going to do this again, I would have coated the inside first. Because uh, it pretty much ruined the outside finish from all the overspray and splatter. You can kind of see there, so... Yeah, what I'm thinking I'm going to have to do is go over the whole thing uh, where there's a lot of overspray and just scuff it off and redo the Par 15 so it's got a nice even finish, but... Uh, the inside's covered, so that's the main part. Yeah, it's just unfortunate that it didn't turn out. Uh, I was hoping. But, uh, yeah, that's why you guys watch these videos, to uh, learn what not to do. But, um, yeah, that's it for me for today.